Welcome to this episode of Morning Report Emergency Medicine. I'm Alec Weir. This is the case of the face plant. An 83-year-old female tripped on a rug and fell face first to the ground. She did not have any loss of consciousness, but she has a lack to her forehead. She's complaining of some neck pain, and she says her left upper extremity, her left arm, feels heavy. She says it hurts, but it feels heavy. Here are her vitals. Her temperature is 36.8 degrees Celsius, heart rate of 62, blood pressure of 137 over 63, respiratory rate of 16, setting 99% on room air. On her neurologic exam, she's alert. She's oriented. She knows where she is, who she is, what time it is. She's moving all of her extremities. However, when you do your neuro exam, her right upper extremity has got about 4 out of 5 strength, while her left is only 3 out of 5. The right lower is 4 plus out of 5, and the left is 4 out of 5. Her deep tendon reflexes in the lower extremities are 1 plus and symmetric. So you get your imaging, plain film, CTs, MRIs, they're negative. Everything is negative. So how do we explain these neuro deficits? We have central cord syndrome. That's right. You know those diseases you memorize right before you take the in-service, right before you take your board exams? That's what we're talking about today, central cord syndrome. It's the most common incomplete cord syndrome caused by a hyperextension injury of the neck. It usually gives you bilateral motor paresis with the upper extremities more affected than the lower and the distal muscle groups more than the proximal. You'll have varying sensory impairment and varying bladder dysfunction, but the prognosis for central cord syndrome is worse with age. And here's a diagram, a little picture that may help bring it home. It's called central cord syndrome. Here's where your injury is, right in the center of the cord. The sensory involvement is variable. The motor, upper extremity weakness more than lower, and the distal muscle groups more than the proximal. Your sphincter involvement, you do that rectal exam, it's variable in central cord syndrome. Our incomplete spinal cord injuries, what are they? Central cord syndrome, like we talked about today, anterior cord syndrome, posterior cord syndrome, and then brown saccard syndrome. I'm not going to go through all of these because I think if I present them all at once, it'll start to get confused and jumbled in your head the way it does in mine. So we just hit central cord today. What are our take-home points? Remember, trauma with neurodeficits is bad. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Hey, look, in the sky. It's Captain Obvious! It's Captain Obvious! Yes, it's Captain Obvious! Obviously. But remember, even if your imaging is negative, you can have these incomplete spinal cord injuries. And today, central cord syndrome, caused by a hyperextension injury to the neck, usually causes motor paresis in the upper extremities more than the lower extremities, distal muscle groups more than the proximal, with a varying sensory involvement. And the prognosis is worse, the older the patient is. That's it for this week. But of course, you can always follow me on Twitter for more updates from Morning Report Emergency Medicine, or you can subscribe to this channel to get the weekly updates. Thanks for listening.